Hey guys, so I just wanted to make a quick video addressing some of the arguments that I've seen uh, lately from climate change skeptics. And I was uh, hoping that you know you guys can use this information as well when you need to. Um, basically, um, climate change can be a really hard topic uh, to discuss because, um, frankly, I'm not uh, an expert on climate science. Uh, I have some uh, background in science, but um, a lot of people don't, you know, so it can get very difficult um, to discuss this, um, especially when uh, they, uh, the skeptics you're talking to, uh, they put out videos of, you know, scientists, you know, saying whatever, you know, climate change skeptics uh, with a Harvard degree and 20, you know, different research papers saying that climate change isn't real because of something, you know, some reason that they give. Um, and that can be kind of intimidating. Um, so this is this is um, a, a video to address that. Um, basically, I can't address when uh, climate change uh, deniers, skeptics, scientists, you know, puts forward like you know some statistic and says you know like there's a two point three percent difference in this graph because of one point five mean radians and you know whatever you know I. I can't understand what that means. I don't know if they're totally fabricating data, if they're misinterpreting data. I haven't looked through their data. I'm not going to do that. It's, not, it's a waste of my time, right? So, but what I can do is address basic things that they say that is readable to a layman, right? So if they say, you know, this chair is brown, I can verify whether that chair is brown, even if he's a Harvard scientist, you know? So... Going based on that logic, I can verify whether if he says, you know, scientists say this, if that's true or not. And that's how I go about addressing uh, these conserv conservatives who put forward a couple of videos that I've seen lately. Um, and I wanted to share it with you guys uh, so you can uh, address it too. So the first video, and I'm going to put all of this in the in the um, uh, information um, section of the video, so you can check it, everything out for yourself. But um, the first is a video called Climate Change, What Do Scientists Say on YouTube by Prager U. Um, and it's by Professor Lindzen, who will uh, introduce himself shortly. I'm an atmospheric physicist. I've published more than 200 scientific papers. For 30 years, I taught at MIT, during which time the climate has changed remarkably little. Let's see if I can take this guy on. But the cry of global warming has grown ever more shrill. In fact, it seems that the less the climate changes, the louder the voices of the climate alarmists get. So let's clear the air and create a more accurate picture of where we really stand on the issue of global warming or, as it is now called, climate change. There are basically three groups of people dealing with this issue. Groups one and two are scientists. Group three consists mostly, at its core, of politicians, environmentalists, and media. Group one is associated with the scientific part of the United Nations International Panel on Climate Change, or IPCC Working Group One. These are scientists who mostly believe that recent climate change is primarily due to man's burning of fossil fuels, oil, coal, and natural gas. This releases CO2, carbon dioxide, into the atmosphere, and they believe this might eventually dangerously heat the planet. So I want you guys to keep this, in, this quote that he just said in mind. The scientists in the IPCC group they believe that the burning of fossil fuels might eventually dangerously heat the planet. Okay? Because he's going to forget this in a couple minutes. Group two is made up of scientists who don't see this as an especially serious problem. It's the group I belong to. We're usually referred to as skeptics. We note that there are many reasons why the climate changes, the sun, clouds, oceans, the orbital variations of the Earth, as well as a myriad of other inputs. None of these is fully understood, and there is no evidence that CO2 emissions are the dominant factor. So, before I proceed, he believes that this is what Group 2 believes. None of these um, systems are fully understood. Every scientist agrees that we don't, frankly, understand anything fully. 
right? There's always a deeper question you can ask. So to make it seem like skeptics believe this while scientists don't, you know, is kind of ridiculous. Um, and But the, the point of contention is that there is evidence that uh, carbon dioxide emissions are the dominant factor. But actually, there is much agreement between both groups of scientists. The following are such points of agreement. So at this point, what you need to realize is this guy is making a defensive video, right? It seems, you know, like he knows what he's talking about. He has all these degrees, but he knows he's in the minority, right? He knows he's in 3% of the scientists that believe this. He knows he can look ridiculous. So what he's trying to do here, he's, he's trying to attach his ridiculous beliefs on the 97% of scientists who actually believe that uh, climate change is real, that it's man-made, and it's a major issue that we need to solve, okay? So this is a very defensive video, and I find it hilarious. One, the climate is always changing. whoop de doo Two, CO2 is a greenhouse gas without which life on Earth is not possible. Without which life on Earth is not possible? That's like fifth grade level biology he's agreeing to right there. But adding it to the atmosphere should lead to some warming. Okay. Three, atmospheric levels of CO2 have been increasing since the end of the Little Ice Age in the 19th century. So he puts a graph and makes it seem like it's a steady climb? I don't know. I'm not going to waste my time to check if that graph is true right now. Um, might be true. Somebody might be lying. It doesn't matter to me right now. I'm not here to debate statistics. Four, over this period, past two centuries, the global mean temperature has increased slightly and erratically by about 1.8 degrees Fahrenheit or 1 degree Celsius. But only since the 1960s have man's greenhouse emissions been sufficient to play a role. Okay. I mean, I don't know. Again, these are all statistics. I'm not going to argue this point. Five, given the complexity of climate, no confident prediction about future global mean temperature or its impact can be made. Okay, so now this is a point of contention. He's saying the IPCC scientists themselves believe that no confident prediction about global mean temperature or its impact can be made. The IPCC acknowledged in its own 2007 report that, quote, the long-term prediction of future climate states is not possible. So this is something I can do. I can Google this and see if that's what they said, right? So I Googled what, you know, that quote that he said, and um, here's what they say. The climate system is a coupled non-linear chaotic system. So it's very chaotic. And therefore, the long-term predictions of future climate states is not possible. But it doesn't end there. Rather, the focus must be upon the prediction of the probability distribution of the system's future possible states by the generation of ensembles of model solutions. Addressing adequately the statistical nature of climate is computationally intensive and requires the application of new methods of model diagnosis, but statistical information is essential. So basically what they're saying is, yeah, it's very complicated. That's why you need to make models so you can make a variety of predictions and see what path we're following. Right? What path we're taking, which one of these models is accurate. And we can see if the predictions come true, right, based on the models. Now, I'm not gonna argue whether the predictions came true or whatnot, right? But I'm just addressing what he said that IPCC thinks, that no confident prediction can be made. That's not what they said, right? It can be made if you do it a certain way, right? If you make the models. That's what the IPCC thinks. In fact, when you look at their conclusions, Right. So the part that he's talking about is actually like how they're working through the issues. Right. Because they know you can't really like address every single aspect of climate. You need to make models. Right. That's what they're saying. Now, here, the actual solution is it is extremely likely, likely 95 percent confidence. Right. More than half of the observed increase in global average surface temperature from 1951 to 2010 was caused by anthrop anthropogenic, which is man-made, increase in greenhouse gas concentration and other anthropogenic forcings together. Okay, so 
They, he said, you can make no predictions, no confident predictions. Here I'm quoting IPCC themselves saying it is extremely likely, 95% confidence that man-made uh, climate change is real. Okay, direct quote. Okay, so what he's saying about the IPCC, this is what the IPCC believes is not true. Okay, either he didn't read it or he didn't understand it. That's a little bit of a more complicated point, but I'm going to hit something very simple right now, okay? In just a second. Anybody can do this. And quote. Most importantly, the scenario that the burning of fossil fuels leads to catastrophe isn't part of what either group asserts. So that's the lie there, right? This part can be easily disproven, okay? One way I'll disprove it is just by going to what he said earlier, okay, of what he thinks IPCC says. Fossil fuels, oil, coal, and natural gas. This releases CO2, carbon dioxide, into the atmosphere, and they believe this might eventually dangerously heat the planet. So he admits the IPCC that, sorry, he admits that that's what the scientists believe just earlier in the same video that it can dangerously heat the planet, right? So now he's saying that uh, the other scientists don't believe that um, uh, that uh, um, uh, that uh, cat that there's no ma uh, there's no catastrophe coming from man-made uh, climate change. And so I again went to NASA's webpage, okay looked at the effects of climate change, okay? And this is their website. And again, I'll post this for everybody to see. The consequences of climate change. And then it goes through a lot of stuff. Future effects, okay? Changes um, through this century and beyond. Temperatures will continue to rise. Frost-free seasons will lengthen, okay? Changes in precipitation patterns. More droughts and heat waves. Hurricanes become stronger. Sea level rise by one to four feet. Arctic less likely to, uh, uh, likely to become ice free, and then they go into regional effects. Northeast, you're going to have heat waves, heavy downpours, sea level rise, posing growing challenges to many aspects of life in the Northeast. Infrastructure, agriculture, fisheries, and ecosystems will be increasingly compromised. Many states and cities are beginning to incorporate climate change into their planning. Northwest. Changes in the timing of stream flow reduces water supplies for competing demand. Um, sea levels rise, erosion, inundation, risks of infrastructure, and increased ocean acidity pose major threats. Increasing wildfire, insect outbreaks, and tree disease are causing widespread tree die-off. It goes on and on and on. Now, I'm not arguing, is NASA telling the truth or not, right? NASA may be lying here, you know? This is on NASA's webpage. But what he cannot say is that the scientists who believe in global warming are not saying catastrophe, uh, cat catastrophe will result, right? He just said it, and I just went to NASA's website. Anyone can do it, which says that there is an aspect of catastrophe to this. Now, he might not believe that that's catastrophe. Oh, you know, ocean acidity, you know, plants dying off, whatever. You know, maybe he thinks that. Maybe we're not agreeing you know, dangerous effects of climate change. He, those are his words, you know. Maybe, in his opinion, that's not a catastrophe, you know. So, I don't know. It's ridiculous, right? Um, anyone can disprove this MIT Harvard, MIT-educated, 200-page paper writing uh, scientist by just simply reading what the scientists say, okay? Now, I'm going to look at another video. Um, this is by Dr. Roy Spencer, another video that I've been sent by conservatives. Um, the video's titled Dr. Roy Spencer. I love that he had to put that he's a doctor uh, in the title. Um, uh, Roy Spencer debunks the 97% IPCC climate global warming consensus. Again, this is defensive. They know they're in the minority. They know like, they look ridiculous being 3% of a very, you know, obviously believed uh, statistic, right? So, Let's look at what he has to say. This is, I think, when he's at a conference or something. Evidence now is, is being amassed, which suggests that the climate system is simply not as sensitive to our addition of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere as most scientists think it is. Sorry, so I forward through some of it. Um, where he goes through, again, statistics that I don't care about for to address him. But what he said is the evidence shows that, you know, the, the system is not as sensitive to carbon dioxide um, as most scientists think it is, 
right? He's saying right there that most scientists don't agree with him on this, right? Accidentally, right? Now watch what he, try, watch what he tries to do when he tries to pretend that most scientists agree with him, that he's in the same camp as most scientists. Uh, I also want to say, since we're talking about most scientists, you know, I've, I've heard 97%, 98%. There's a recent paper by John Cook and co-authors who looked at thousands of research papers which have been published in the scientific literature to see what fraction, you know, support the scientific consensus on global warming. Well, it turns out that the 97% consensus that they found I am indeed part of, and Senator Sessions mentioned he would agree with it too. And my associate, John Christie, he agrees with it. In fact, all skeptics that I know of that work in this business all are part of that 97% because the 97% includes people who think humans have some influence on climate. Is that true? Is that true? The 97% includes people who think humans have some effect on climate. So... I can confirm this. Anyone can confirm this. So I went to the paper myself, okay? Um, I looked up the Cook paper, okay? John Cook is a leading author quantifying the consensus of anthropogenic global warming in the scientific literature. This is what he's talking about. And now I'm in the introduction uh, section, last sentence of the first paragraph, okay? I'm going to read it. We examined a large sample of the scientific literature on global climate change published over a 21 year period in order to determine uh, the level of scientific consensus that human activity is very likely causing most of the current global warming. So the scientific consensus is that human activity is very likely causing most of the current global warming. He said some of the global current warming that, you know, he, he believes that this is what the statistic shows, right? It's right there. In the paper right so either he didn't read the last sentence of the first paragraph which has very basic English words it says causing most of the current global warming okay or he's lying right I can do this right anyone can do this and it's not that difficult and it it's embarrassing that this is the sort of the level of uh, argument that they're reduced to okay because they know they're in the minority they know they look like losers okay even though they have like phd degrees or whatnot they're trying to use that degree to influence regular people to make it seem like oh look at how t intelligent we are but at the same time they're making defensive arguments about why they're not a huge bunch of losers and why they're like everybody else it's pathetic all right i hope this guy this um video helped you guys um i'll again link everything um, so you, you can use it too. Okay? Take care.